Hello everyone, it's Alina. Welcome to my Soap General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. We've known for a while now that sooner or later, General Hospital would have to either temporarily recast the part of Spencer Cassidine or explain the character's extended absence. Why? Because portrayer Nicholas Alexander Chavez would take time off to film the limited series Monsters, in which he'd been cast as Lyle Menendez. At last, we know considerably more about when the actor will leave and what will happen in his absence. According to sources whispering into the ear of our sister site TV Line, we'll be going into Spencer withdrawal sooner rather than later. Chavez will last appear as Spencer on Wednesday, January 31. That's right. We've got less than a week to savor Spencer and Trina's romance, which causes us to fear that their romantic trip to Paris is about to take a very unromantic turn. So what will happen to Spencer? While details are limited, the story says that Spencer will disappear from the canvas for several months. Obviously, the next question is what that means for Trina and her portrayer Tabiana Ali. On that front, we have good news, in that TV line indicates the actress and her character will not be quitting the canvas. The project necessitated absence of Chavez comes at an important time for General Hospital. Why? Because because to a change behind the scenes, current head writers Dan O'Connor and Chris Van Etten will pen Spencer's vanishing act, while incoming authors Elizabeth Court and Patrick Mulcahy will develop the storyline surrounding Spencer's return. From a storytelling point of view, this is also an interesting time. Spencer and Trina have arrived in Paris, where she's set to study at the Sorbonne for a semester. Meanwhile, Spencer got himself into serious trouble with several persons back in Port Charles when he practically turned baby brother Ace over to their dad, Nicholas, in order to get the tot away from wicked mom Esma. Soaps.com has the newest new General Hospital spoilers from Monday, January 29, to Friday, February 2. Spencer and Trina's trip to Paris goes from romantic to rocky thanks to an unforeseen twist. Meanwhile, Sunny and Laura have even more reason to unite. A familiar face returns, and Esm continues to avoid those seeking for her. Read on for all the details. Hula la. Things are getting quite swoon-worthy in Paris as Spencer and Trina spend a romantic evening. The hunt for Esme is on, with Dante and Chase searching high and low for Ace's missing mom. Does this have anything to do with the news Alexis is going to dump on Laura? Curtis takes the first step, both proverbially and physically, down the road to recovery as he begins physical therapy. Something begins gnawing at the back of Finn's skull as he turns something about his case over and over in his head. It's one of those times that Diane excels at when she makes a stunning statement that's going to startle everyone in the courtroom. How will the important decision Curtis and Portia make influence their family? Spencer discovers something surprising. When Brennan was detained a few weeks back, we couldn't help but hope we'd see the slick operator again, and today that hope comes true as he is questioned by Jordan and Anna. Dex informs Sunny and Alva that they should be on high alert because of a threat on the horizon. Lois and Olivia seem to have a rough time deciding whether they're going to be friends or foes these days. However, that might be simpler if Brooklyn's mom launches a threat at Ned's wife. Paris is an all-romance and candlelight for Spencer and Trina, especially once they find themselves in a precarious situation. Despite things looking gloomy, Laura keeps out hope. Adam has a whole bevy of support as Carly, Felicia, and Jocelyn unite behind the troubled young guy. It's the end of the road for Drew and Michael. How will Carly feel about this parting of the ways? Lois has enormous preparations for her daughter and Chase's wedding. Will they all wind up on the same page? Tracy does what she does best by rising to the occasion. Jocelyn is in for a shock, and we're ready to assume it has something to do with Adam. Wonder how the residents of Port Charles feel about their mayor Laura bonding even deeper with coffee importer Sunny. Later, someone completely unexpected comes up on Laura's doorway. Word about Bobby's, formerly Kelly's, must be spreading, because Carly is about to meet a first-time customer. Anna and Jordan arrange up a meeting while their research proceeds. This week, General Hospital gave us a small reprieve from Mina, but also reintroduced wild Aisma. There once again a lot of fluff spliced in, but Friday's show with its twists and turns brought the drama. 
Let's discuss. I will admit, Ezen restored to true form in record time, and I'm a bit displeased with this development. I was wanting to watch her battle with who she was and who she became. Now it's like Esm 2.0 has all but vanished. Okay, I thought Drew and Carly's original idea to fire Mina from Crimson for the spits and giggles, then replace Carly with someone suitable to head the magazine, was at least a good one from a business perspective. But then Drew thought he and Carly should just manage the magazine together, because together they can do anything as long as they are a team. As I wrote in last week's piece, I genuinely want to see Carly struggle with this and honestly fail. That anyone can do anyone else's job is such a soap staple, and this simply feels like yet another win for Carly. Valentin pointed out the same thing to Nina, that Drew and Carly don't know what they are doing, and he'd be pleased to invest in her creating a competing magazine. However, Nana refused him down. Say what? Yes, it seems Nina has finally learnt something, that she has to curb these evil urges of hers if she wants to save a relationship with Willow. Also, Nina and Valentin still have that on-screen connection, and I wouldn't mind seeing them reconnect since we can't have Vanna. Another thought did enter my mind. Michael and Drew are continuously labeling Valentin an absentee CEO, and Valentin has been concentrating most of his focus on Charlotte's well-being. How does interim CEO of ELQ Nina Reeves sound? If Carly can run a magazine, then Nina can run ELQ. Actually, given the show's history, Anyone can manage ELQ. So Jordan's research into Curtis Shooter got her scooped up by the FBI of all people. Interesting, and whatever was behind the door yelling commands at the agents is the new big bad perhaps? Or big good? The tale has potential and Jordan could use a strong storyline after all this time. A lot of spectators appreciated the chemistry between Brick and Jordan throughout their scenes together. Honestly, I wasn't feeling it. Brick seemed like the old SNL character The Ladies' Man to me. Friday's episode started to bring the messy and still dangling threads of the Metro Court shooting, Austin's murder, and Pikeman all together when Jordan realized the person who was calling her about the lead on the gun was none other than unscrupulous of a USB boss John Brennan. Not only that, the gun supplied to Ava by Austin's possible killer is also from the same stolen WSB stash as the gun that was used to shoot at Anna and Sunny. Honestly, I would have rather the whole Pikeman nonsense be left in the past, but if this means the return of John Brennan then I'm here for it. Also, it took Laura long enough to offer Anna back the role of PCPD commissioner. I mean we all knew it was coming. Let's face it, Finn's malpractice action has been a bore and hasn't made Finn or Liz any more fascinating as a pair. However, watching the trial was fun. Then again it's always fascinating to watch Diane go up against someone in court and the proof Sam dug up not only turned things around for Finn, but related this tale to others. If you missed the show and didn't read the recap, basically Muldoon knew he had cancer before going to Finn. That much they surmised going in. But it turns out the Muldoon family is broke. Why are they broke? They were significant investors in Aurora, and when someone inflated the stock prices to profit off a merger that never materialized, and Aurora's stock prices fell because of it. Yep, Carly and Drew need to quit running around crying their innocent crime, hurt no one but themselves. Muldoon set Finn up for this lawsuit, knowing that was the only way he could take care of his family when he was gone. Well, in the means they're accustomed to that is. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please click like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.